time to give God thanks and praise. Amen. We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We're to enter into his courts with praise. We are to be thankful unto him and to bless his name. Welcome to Providence Church of God in Christ tonight. I want to take you back and then I want to take you forward tonight. Last week, we talked about keep your connection. Keep your connection with Christ. Keep your connection with one another. And tonight I want to talk about a kingdom perspective. Not just a carnal perspective, but a kingdom perspective. A kingdom perspective is a different mindset than what we're used to being and used to doing. A kingdom mindset is on a different level. And so we have to have a kingdom perspective or else we really will lose it in this life. If you continue to dwell on what you see and what you feel and what you hear, uh, you're going to get more and more and more depressed. Mm -hmm. But when you lift up your mind, when you put your mind on the things of the kingdom, it changes everything about you. And so uh, let me just say that of late I have observed that churches are in a very precarious situation right now. I highlighted to you a few weeks ago that only 48% of regular churchgoers have watched any online services since this COVID-19 quarantine began when churches began to suspend their services on Sunday and midweek services. And then of that 48%, even fewer people watch their own services, even though 96% of pastors are now streaming online. Let me tell you that, um, let me simply remind you that God has set up church with teachers and students. Pastors are not there because they need a paycheck. Amen. Pastors are called by God. Uh, and he said in uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, I believe, or is it, or is it Ephesians, Ephesians 4, he said um, he's given us uh, pastors, apostles, teachers, evangelists, um, all of these people for the perfecting of the saints, amen, so that the body of Christ will be ready uh, to meet him when he returns for it. And so remember that God set up the church. He set up uh, pastors and members. He set up teachers and students. He set up preachers and sinners. All of those work in concert to satisfy the will of the Lord. Now, if 52% are not going to church each week, nor receiving a word online, then who's leading the sheep? The scary answer is that sheep are leading themselves. That's really scary. Uh, That uh, no one is pouring into you, into your heart, into your spirit, into your soul, but that you're going by what you heard in the last five or 10 years. That's scary. And so last week I uh, told you from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter and verse number 12, the Bible says, we beseech you brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Know them that are preaching and pouring into your soul. Not only know them, but pray for them as well. And the Bible says in verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians 5, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, understanding that they have a great task of standing between man on earth and God in heaven. That's a very difficult place to be uh, without help from God and without prayer from people. And so, and then the last part of that verse says, and be at peace among yourselves. Uh, Pastors spend too much time settling disagreements and breaking up fights in the church. Amen, amen, amen. Tonight, uh, tonight, I want to further highlight the importance of godly leadership as well as godly fellowship, because godly leadership is only accomplished with godly fellowship. And if no one is following the leader, then he's just on a journey by himself or herself. Since we have extended our reach here at Providence and our outreach, 
I have continually pointed those who tune into this ministry on a weekly basis back to their pastor, back to your local leader. Uh, and I told you we have people tuning in from India, from Ireland, from Germany, uh, from California, from Pennsylvania, all over the world. But you need someone that is local to you to be able to pour into you Amen. for the betterment of your life because you still need to meet God in peace. Amen. That's the essence of preaching is to yes. prepare you to meet God in peace. And let me say that your presence and your presence, your P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S -E and your P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, amen, should be first to your local leader. If amen. you would like to sow a seed here into this ministry, I have only encouraged such after you've taken care of your local amen. home church first. We're not here to accumulate more members. We're not here to increase in money. Understand that we are not here to profit from the ministering of the word to you, but we're simply here to bless your spirit Amen. so that you can meet God Amen. in peace. And I know that's not a Kojic mentality because um, money, uh, you have to have money to do things, but the Lord provides. Amen. Yes, this yes, is yes. providence. Amen. Amen. This is the yes. place of God's provision. God's provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, taken yes. from the prophet uh, Jeremiah. No Amen. Uh, take, taken from the word of God uh, yes. where uh, uh, the prophet took his son up on the mountain and um, the son asked him, I see the fire um, and I see everything for a sacrifice but the sacrifice. And he said, the Lord will provide. Yes. Amen. And Thank so you, Abraham tells Isaac, the Lord will provide. Mm -hmm. Amen. So yes. the Lord's going to provide for us. And we appreciate Thank your support. God. We appreciate your weekly uh, tuning into this ministry. May the Lord continue to bless your life. Having said that, let me point you to Galatians 6 and 9. 6 and 6, I'm sorry. The Bible says, let him that is taught in the word communicate to him that teacheth in all good things. The teacher is supported by the student. Amen. This simply means that if you have a good leader, then you should support the ministry with your tithe and with your offering. Amen. The giving of your tithe and your offering sustain the ministry where you are a member. Verse number seven of Galatians six, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We have misused this scripture to punish those who sin against us, mm -hmm. but we don't hear it much when we sin against others. Amen. We love to quote that <laughs> as, as if to say, God's going to get you back for what you've done for me. Uh, no. Nah. God does say that vengeance is his, but you yes. can't make God do anything against me. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is merciful yes, uh, to yes, us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, let me, let yes. me hallelujah. Glory be to God. God yes. is merciful. Yes, hallelujah. Is. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, the Thank true you. meaning of that scripture is simply this. This is where each of us make our choice for heaven. Yes. If we live carnally, we receive death. If we live spiritually, we receive or reap life. And the next verse confirms it. He says, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. If we live according to our carnal passions of self-satisfaction, immediate gratification, living only for the moment, trusting in ourselves and following our own mind, we can never get to heaven. We will die in our sins. It makes no sense to live in hell on earth and then die and go to hell. So he that sows to the flesh, if you continue to feed this flesh and not the spirit, then heaven is not your destiny. But if we sow seeds of righteousness, yes. holiness, yes. 
truth, and yes. godliness, yes. then we shall reap life everlasting. And so Galatians 5.22 says it better than I could ever say it. This is what happens when we are sowing to the spirit. It produces this. It says, but the fruit of the spirit yes. is love, Thank joy, God. peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. It is better to have the fruit of the spirit than to reap what we sow to the flesh. One of my stalwart scriptures is Hosea, the 10th chapter in verse number 12. The Bible says, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Yes. Reap in mercy. It'd be wonderful if righteousness came to us as we sowed righteousness, but that's not always the case because we've sowed so much of ourselves into ourselves the Lord is so merciful that he brings back mercy instead of justice to us. A whole lot of folks want to be treated fairly. A whole lot of folks want an eye for an eye, but that's Old Testament. That's not New Covenant. Hallelujah. But the Bible says here, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Yes. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Break up that stony heart. Break up those hard places yes, in your yes. life. Break, Break up, up those places Lord. where Break you don't want to embrace folks. You just want to erase Break folks. Up, Break up those places yes, where you hate instead yes. of love. Break up those places where you want to distance instead yes, of come close. Yes, Too many families are torn apart because of a years ago yes, misunderstanding. It goes back to the Hatfields and the McCoys. No. You become no. so divided that you lose focus on why you were divided in the first place. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's time to break up that fallow ground. Yes. Break up those break calluses up, yes. that have built up in your life. Yes, break up those stony places. Yes. Yes. For it is yes. time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness yes, upon God. you. Yes. Seek the Lord until he changes your atmosphere. Yes. Seek the Lord until yes, he breaks God. up your fallow ground. Yes, seek Lord. the Lord until he changes you. Yes. He turns everything around. He makes your enemies your footstool. Yes. He makes your enemies be at peace with you. Yes. It's time to seek the Lord yes. till he come and rain yes, righteous, Lord. not just yes. a drop of yes. righteousness, but the Lord wants yes. to rain yes. righteousness. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Can we give God some praise? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand the Lord is not against you, but the Lord is for you. Uh -huh. The Lord sent his son Jesus Christ so that you could have life and that more abundantly. He gets no joy in sending people to hell. The Bible even says that hell hath enlarged herself. Hell had to enlarge because more folks wouldn't choose Christ. They would choose their own way and their own thing and their own way of doing things. I don't want to go to a place that wasn't designed for me. Heaven was made for me. Yeah. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Right. Amen. I don't want to go to hell and I don't want you to go to hell either. Amen. Understand. The yes. Lord understands that we are but dust. Mm -hmm. He knows that we were born sinners. He knows that without his help, without his divine assistance, without his forgiveness, without his mercy, then we will not make it. Let me say to you that mercy minimizes the reaping of sin. Mercy minimizes the reaping of sin. We don't get back what we put out Amen. when it comes to the sin that thank we've committed you, we in our lives. Yes. On the flip side of that, understand that grace magnifies the reaping of righteousness. If you just give God a little bit more, yes. then you'll see much more righteousness coming your way. Yes. God will rain righteousness, yes. uh, hallelujah, into your life. Not just a dribble, not just a drizzle, but God will rain righteousness. When you look on the left, there's righteousness. When you look on the right, there's righteousness. God wants to bless you. Yes. Let me say this from Lamentations, the third chapter, verse number 21 and 22. The Bible says, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy yes. that we're not consumed. Thank you. I know you think you're so cute and wonderful and pretty and uh, excellent, but you're not all of that. Let me just tell you, amen. It is of the Lord's mercy yes. 
that we're not consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It's because of God's mercies. Amen. He gives you new mercies for every 24-hour period. He gives you new mercies so you can live with yourself. He gives yes. you new mercies Hallelujah. so that you're not consumed. He gives you new mercies so that you can smile through the day. He gives you new mercies so that you can have joy and not sorrow. He gives you new mercies for you to live yes. the life that he's called you to. Yeah. We yes. must admit that the stuff we have done in our lives have not been requited on a logical scale, but rather on a merciful scale. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God. Some Thank stuff we don't want ever to come back into our lives. Amen. Some stuff we've done, we wouldn't wish on our worst enemies, Amen. Uh, but the mercy of God. Thank Somebody you, God. say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, have mercy on Lord, my life. Mercy. mercy means we get less punishment for sin Lord, than we deserve. Let me say that again. Mercy means we get less punishment for sin than we deserve. And grace means we get more favor than we deserve. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. They work hand in hand. Yes. Hallelujah. God will capitalize Thank on your you, righteousness Jesus. and he'll have mercy on your sins. Yes. Oh, what a mighty God we mighty serve. God. Amen. And candidacy for mercy and grace is simply this. Receiving, submitting to, and living for the Lord. Amen. That's all you got to do is just let the Lord come into your life. Let him take over. Let him uh, supersede your carnal desires. I know you want to be comfortable. I do too. I know you want to have what you want to eat. I know you want to live where you want to live. I know you don't even want to stop at the stoplight. Amen. You want to come through town and let all of the lights be green and you get on to where you want to go. That's not life. Amen. The only way for you to do that is go down in Mississippi and drive out in the country. Amen. Well, you, can, you, know, you might get hindered by a deer down there somewhere. But anyway, let me get back on track. Even though we are now saved and candidates for eternal life, we still don't think we get our fair share of mercy nor grace, but the right perspective will fix that. Mm -hmm. A kingdom perspective Thank will fix God. all of that. A kingdom perspective will shift you mm -hmm. uh, from what you desire to what uh, God desires. Hallelujah. Yes. Let me say this to all of the spoiled Christians who think you deserve more blessings and less stressings. Let me talk to you that think that you deserve more friends and less enemies, more pleasure and less pain. Let me say to you, shame on you. Where did you get that from? You're not reading the same Bible that I'm reading. The Bible says they that live godly shall suffer persecution. It would be wonderful to have a life full of free of pain, free of disappointment, free of enemies. Amen. But you ought to be thankful. Hallelujah. And give all of that energy toward living a model life for Jesus Christ. Luke 6 and 35 gives us a real perspective on what we should be looking at and what we should be doing. Amen. Luke 6 and 35 says, but love your enemies. Amen. You mean I can't hate? No, you can't hate. You represent Jesus Christ. Amen. Love your enemies and do good. Not only do you have to shift your attitude about your enemies, but you also have to do good. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he says, and lend. Amen. Sometimes money divides the best of friends. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, do good yes. and lend, hoping for nothing again. Only what you do for Christ is going to last anyway. Amen. So if you're lending to be Lord over someone else, you've got the wrong attitude. Amen. Amen. Everything we do should be as unto the Lord. So when you are driving, it should be as unto the Lord. When you're giving, it should be as unto the Lord. When you're working, it should be as unto the Lord. And he says, and your reward shall be great. If you do good, lend, hoping for nothing again, the Bible says your reward shall be great. Doesn't always come from people. 
God knows how to reward you better than anyone. Amen. And sometimes the best reward is peace. Sometimes the best reward is being able to sleep at night. Amen. Enemies all around, but being able to sleep at night. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank haters, God. agitators, and instigators all around, but Thank being able God. to sleep at night and not yes. worry about a thing. Yes. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry Hallelujah. About Hallelujah. And if you don't have a neighbor near you, tell yourself, don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry huh? about yes, Lord. a thing. He says, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be called the children of of the highest, and that highest is spelled with a capital H. There is no one greater than the Lord. Nobody. You shall be called his child, yes. not Thank his slave, God. not his uh, refuse, but uh, you shall be called the children of the highest. Not even a stepchild or a distant child or a illegitimate child, but you shall be called the children of the highest. And this is what I love about this scripture. He says, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Amen. Do you know what that means? It, it, it really means that's what got us into God. Because he was kind to the unthankful. Yes. When we thought we were all of that and a bag of chips, uh -huh. we were really all of that and a bowl of grits. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he said he, he was kind to us. When we were evil, he was still kind to us. Let me tell you what the Bible says. He says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. We knew the love of God before we knew the God of love. Yes. Amen. God was good to us yes. long time yes. ago. Yes. God allowed us to get out of adolescence into adulthood. And that deserves a praise to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. God has really been good. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes, the Lord is good. And so the right perspective as I come to a close tonight is found in Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's the kingdom perspective. We continue to not be weary in well-doing. He says, do good. Hallelujah. And you shall be called the children of the highest. Do good. And the Lord shall reward thee. Do good. And don't get tired of doing good. I know folks get on your last nerve. Amen. But you found out recently that you have more than one last nerve. You got about 10 last nerves <laughs> because they wore that last nerve out and you're still standing. Woo, they wore it out and you're still smiling. Thank you, Lord. They wore it out and you still love them. Yes. Wore it out and you're still helping them. That's the love of God. Oh, Hallelujah. God. Glory Thank be God. to God. Amen. Be tired of sowing to the flesh, but never tire of sowing to the spirit. Yes. Let me take you back to Mississippi for a moment. The crop does not know when it's due season, but the farmer does. Let me put it in biblical terms. The husbandman, and the Lord deals a lot with the vine and the grape. The husbandman knows when the fruit is ripe and ready. Hallelujah. The Lord knows when to pick us. He also knows when to prune us. Ah, the Lord knows. Somebody say the Lord knows. The Lord knows. Hallelujah. Yes, ah, yes, Lord. Oh, if you can't good. rest in nothing else tonight, know that the Lord knows. Yes, he knows. He knows what your enemies are plotting yes, against you. Yes. He also knows how to make a way of escape that yes, you may be able to bear it. He knows, uh, amen, your next move. He knows when your blessing is going to intersect your yes. life. He knows when you're going to you. get sick. And when you're going to get healed. He yes. knows yes. when you're low on money. He knows no. when to bless yes. you. Thank Somebody you. say again, he knows. He knows. Hallelujah. He knows. And so rest and trust in that yes. he, knows. he knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. And so not only must we have the right perspective, the right thinking, the right mindset. Yes. But we also must have the right elective, the right decision, and the right doing. Amen. Verse number 10 as we close. As we have therefore opportunity, and this is what trips a lot of people, they're good at doing good, but you can't just be good to yourself. God gives you somebody to be good to. Amen. 
And so he says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them that are of the household of faith. Two things are highlighted in Galatians 6, 9, and 10. Number one, internal thoughts and personal actions. Uh, let us not be weary in well-doing. So you got to get it right on the inside because to do the right thing with the wrong attitude is still sin. Amen. And to do the wrong thing with the right attitude is still sin. Mm -hmm. So your thinking and your doing have to line up in order for God to bless yes. what you do. And so don't just do it because it's required. Uh, ask the Lord to work on your attitude in yes. doing yes. so that you do it from the heart, not just from the head. Amen. So he highlights internal thoughts and personal actions. And then in verse 10, he highlights external person to person behavior. And so I don't care how much you don't like me. You can't bypass me to get to God. Amen. You got to come through me. You got to treat me right. Amen. In order to say, I love you. How can we say that we love God whom we've not seen Amen. and hate our That's brother true. whom we see every day? I feel like preaching, That's but I'm true. not going to do it. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we lived only by ourselves, we would still need to not be weary in well-doing. But since we don't live only by ourselves, we must demonstrate well-doing to others. Let me say this lastly. Sometimes we are more gooder. Yes, uh, to all the English teachers out there. Uh, sometimes we're more gooder to strangers than we are to family. So the Lord puts in a household clause. He says, especially to them who were of the household of faith. Let me say it another way. Be especially good to kingdom brothers and sisters. Amen. Yes. Be especially good. God rewards you for being kind to one another. That's how love is multiplied. Amen. If you can't be kind to me and we on our way to the same heaven, something's wrong. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me recap. As we close, keep your connection with Christ most of all. Don't lose your connection with Christ. But then work on and strengthen your connection with your local ministry. Remember, your presence is important. Your presence, your, your, your cha-ching, your cash, y'all know what that means. Amen. <laughs> your presence is important. And your prayers are important for the one who is pouring into your life. Sow seeds of righteousness to reap a harvest of righteousness. And I'll say lastly to you, get a grip. Get the right perspective on life. God owes you nothing, but he wants to bless you. God has no obligation to do anything, but because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him yes. shall not perish but that they shall have everlasting life. God does for us because God loves us. It's not about you. It's all about the kingdom of God. Develop and keep a kingdom perspective yes. so that you can receive kingdom rewards. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we come before you now. We come saying thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you care enough to send the very best into our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross, uh, that we would have eternal life if we only believe on him. Lord, I pray for that person tonight that is struggling within themselves. I pray for that person tonight who is feeling weak, disconnected, lonely, and lost. Lord, I pray that you will usher them into your presence. I pray, God, that you will bring us back into righteous fellowship with you. Lord, you said in your word that he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Give us a hunger for the things of you. Give us a thirst, O oh God, for your word. Give us a hunger, O oh God, for prayer in these last and evil days. Lord, you said that in your presence there's fullness of joy. 
At your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. So Lord, we thank you that you care for us. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that we are your property. Yes, we you. are your children. We belong to you and not to another. And Lord, we thank you thank for our due season coming into thank focus. You, we thank you that no matter what thank we you, see, we still believe that our due season is on the horizon. Yes, we thank you that you blessed us as we are. And we thank you for the blessings that are to come. And Lord, we decree by faith yes. and by fact, yes. better. Hallelujah. We shout better. better. Hallelujah. Better, better in our homes, Lord. Better yes. in our better. hearts, Lord. Better in our lives. Yes, we thank better. you for better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Better. We better. praise you, Lord, for better. Yes. In the name in of the name Jesus, of we Jesus. pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah.